He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. In many countries, the right-hand man to the president or the prime minister is the man who runs the economy, the chancellor. So it's not surprising to see that the Antichrist right-hand man, the false prophet, will be the one to initiate a one-world economy on behalf of the Antichrist one-world government, and it will be controlled by a mark that is placed on the right hand or on the forehead. Nobody will be able to buy or sell without this mark, which means that nobody will be able to participate in society without the mark. If you can't buy or sell, then you can't own a business, sell products or services, buy food, buy clothes, pay a mortgage or rent a property, drive a car, get on a bus, gain employment, buy insurance, own a passport, pay taxes or really do anything at all. If you don't join the system, then your destiny is living in caves, hunting and foraging for nuts and berries and trying to avoid detection from the authorities who will put you in prison or kill you if they find you. We know that the 144,000 will be surviving in the wilderness during this time, but only because they have the special favour of God. It won't be so easy for the rest. We don't really need to speculate as to how the mark of the beast could be implemented because the technology already exists. In fact, it's already been trialled. For some time now, we have been moving towards a cashless society. Globally, cash transactions are still the most popular method of payment, but the rise of electronic payments is unstoppable. In the World Payments Report 2013, it was revealed that global debit card usage is going up by about 15.8% per year. Credit card usage is going up by about 12.3% per year. Online payments are expected to rise by 18.1% next year, and mobile phone payments are expected to rise by a massive 58.5%. Total non-cash payments were expected to top 333 billion per year at the end of 2013. Significantly, we're also seeing a trend towards contactless payments. Debit and credit cards have long been fitted with chip and pin capabilities, but now they're also being installed with integrated RFID chips. These new chips emit a radio frequency capable of communicating with payment processing devices up to a range of five meters away. Whether you're buying groceries or gas or dinner to go, nowadays you can just wave your card and you're on your way. It's the latest technology in millions of credit and debit cards, thanks to a tiny chip hidden inside. It's called RFID radio frequency identification. This little device sends out a radio signal with your credit card information. It's designed to be a faster way to pay at stores all over town. All new smartphones are able to send and receive payments through contactless NFC or near field communication technology too. Banks are increasingly aware of their customers desire to pay for goods and services through their mobile phones and are producing banking and wallet apps that contain those capabilities. Mobile technology is creating a major disruption in the way we shop. M-commerce, M-payment and M-wallet transactions are happening contactlessly and through mobile apps, web, SMS and USSD. Right now, there are approximately 7 million NFC-enabled phones. By 2015, we're expected to reach a staggering 203 million. Already, we make roughly $240 billion in M-payment purchases worldwide. And that's estimated to top $670 billion by 2015. From entertainment and electronics to train tickets and travel services, there are virtually no limits to what consumers are using their phones to purchase. It's becoming clear that mobile payments will radically change the way we spend. M payments will transform customers' lives, providing a smarter, richer, more rewarding reality. And in this new age of M payments, retailers, Financial institutions, technology companies and wireless providers will have the power to deliver it. It's a different world, full of new possibilities. With flexible payment options, customers will have the opportunity to complete a purchase with not just one, but several payment methods if they choose. Payment terms can be completely redefined. 
and financial institutions will have the ability to personalize terms for every single purchase for every single customer. Retailers and credit card companies may just have to compete for customers' payment selections for every individual purchase. Now, with the absence of physical credit cards, card marketing as we know it may have to evolve. Customers will have unprecedented control. Empowered by personal financial management that monitors their money in real time, customers will have more control of their financial health. While opportunities abound, there will be significant hurdles to adoption such as trust, security, and overcoming ingrained behaviors. Great experience design will be critical to success. And with the convenience of digital receipts, personal accounting will be easier than ever. M payments will open up a universe of opportunities. But what about the cash customers? The prepayers? The unbanked? The underserved? And the non-smartphone users? How will they be accounted for? Without checkout counters, cashiers, or tellers, what happens to actual store and bank spaces? With no need for cash, will ATMs even exist? As these forms of payment become increasingly ubiquitous, the drawbacks of cash are becoming obvious. Cash is less secure, it's dirty, it's not traceable, it's risky and costly to transport. It takes more time to count and process, and let's not even consider checks. It's already been announced by UK banks that checks are being phased out and will become completely obsolete within a few years. On the other hand, what could be simpler than secure wireless electronic transfers that take 0.001 seconds for a computer to process? From contactless payment technology incorporated into debit and credit cards and mobile phones, it's a very small leap to transfer that pre-existing, ubiquitous, easy, quick, efficient system into an even more secure environment, the human body itself. For many years, the existence of the very chip has been well known. This is a chip about the size of a grain of rice that can be implanted under the skin and which is capable of storing all the necessary details required for payment transactions, along with other identifiers such as social security or national insurance numbers, medical records and such like. Upon the invention of this chip, a future was painted whereby we could live entirely without wallets, debit cards, ID cards, passports, loose change or any kind of money whatsoever. When you go to the supermarket, imagine if the chip in your wrist could automatically communicate with the store's checkout computer and the money could be debited from your account without having to rummage around for cards or money. Quick, hassle-free shopping. No need for PIN codes or passwords and it's more secure too. After all, people may lose their cards and phones all the time, but it takes a special set of circumstances to lose a wrist or a head. We already know about some of the other benefits of the system because we're already utilising them. For example, in many countries now, it's illegal to own a pet that hasn't been microchipped. The benefits of chipping animals are clear. When they get lost, they can be scanned and instantly the animal's name, address and vaccination records are available to the vet or the finder, who can then return the pet safely. Some pets now even have chips which communicate with doors, so that they will automatically open when the animal approaches. Others are now being implanted with GPS chips that relay their location to their owner, who is able to pick it up on their mobile device. No more getting lost. There's no reason why similar benefits wouldn't apply to children or to people in general. Indeed, many in the medical profession are already pushing for people to be chipped. So many emergency physicians have to operate blind. We have to make medical decisions not knowing what medicines you take or what allergies you have. Hi, Dr. Hamaka. We're going to uh, check your scan today, okay? Harvard doctor John Halomka says this radio frequency identification chip may solve that problem. He had it implanted in his right upper arm. A scanner reads an identification number. Those 16 digits are then entered into a secure website where his medical history is stored. EMT worker Brian Orsati says the chip could help emergency workers. One of the big things is if, if you ever have um, some type of trauma patient where they come in and they're unable to give you their information and or their medical history. Anyone can get the chip and while some patients may be concerned about privacy issues, Dr. Halamka says the benefits are clear. I'm a rock climber and I believe that if I fall off a cliff and you find me unconscious, the comfort of being able to scan me and figure out who I am outweighs my concern for privacy. The chip is encased in unbreakable glass and is about the size of a grain of rice. The procedure is done with anesthesia and is relatively pain-free. It's like putting a knitting needle 
under your skin. But in this case, he says getting something under your skin is a good thing. And about 80 centers around the country have the device that can detect the chip. If hospitals purchase this detection equipment, the system will most likely start to include more and more people in those communities who will want the chips. And then there are the security benefits. We've already had politicians trying to foist ID cards on the general population in a bid to foil terrorism. The same arguments could be used to foist biometric technology on us as well. Indeed, we're already seeing tech companies introducing biometrics into their products. Apple led the way with fingerprint scanning on the iPhone 5S and other smartphone manufacturers have followed suit. Supermarket giants Tesco have recently announced that they will be trialing optimized eyeball and face recognition scanners so that they can tailor advertising to shoppers at the checkouts while they wait. Technology similar to that seen in the movie Minority Report. Imagine if they could tailor the adverts based on the information contained within your personal biochip. That's something that they would be very interested in. So as the whole world amalgamates and as fears about terrorism and identity theft rise, and as the arguments are put forward by scientists, bankers, politicians and doctors, and as corporations realise that this technology would serve their commercial interests, and as the technology itself increasingly makes all this possible, we can clearly see a route through which all of the various interests will converge to make this happen in the end time kingdom. Especially when despotic authorities realise that it will give them an easy way to track our movements and activities. Now some people say an implantable microchip can't be the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast must be a visible mark. This is a common argument. So it's interesting that scientists are currently developing epidermal electronics or data tattoos. A team of scientists led by University of Illinois professor John Rogers has created a new, less intrusive way of gathering data from the human body. Unlike conventional equipment that hardwires patients to a stationary machine, the epidermal electronics, as they're called, attach to the skin in the same way you would attach a temporary tattoo. Our thought was that if you could convert the electronics from the rigid boxy form that exists today into a format that looks like the skin in terms of mechanical properties, uh, shape, uh, stretchability, toughness, uh, then you could almost make like a second skin that would laminate on the surface of the uh, biological skin in a completely seamless, integrated fashion uh, that would be essentially invisible to the user, but able to deliver all of this kind of new functionality through the skin. 